All right, so as promised, I am back and I'm doing my next uh, my next weekly rant. So these are gonna come every single Monday. And today I want to discuss how to kill a tryout, how to stand out at a tryout. Cause I've had a lot of people ask me this question is, and it's gonna be a two parter. What do I look for if I was scouting? And then what does a normal American coach look for when scouting? So whether you're doing something like ODP, ID2, high school, club, or anything else, college, right? So here are some keys that coaches will look for. So I'm gonna start it off with what I look for when I'm evaluating players. So I got three main topics that I, I consider. Technique, game IQ, so tactical understanding, and then the third thing is personality. Now, obviously everybody knows what technique is, how good you can control a pass dribble shoot, and then tactical understanding or game IQ is how well do you understand and it also depends on the age group, you know, if it's a certain age, whatever. Do you understand where to be on a field? Do you understand width and depth? Do you understand how to move? Are you aware of what's around you? Do you check for defenders, teammates, and space? And then the, the third thing is personality. Now this one, you may understand, you may not, but this is more lines of how does a player react? How much do they want it? Are they mentally strong enough? And I think this is a topic that a lot of people don't understand and do understand at the same time and it's, it's complicated but I'm gonna explain the process here momentarily so I want to talk about personality because this is also a question that somebody asked me they're like what do you look for and so I told them the three things that I just told you and they said well what what do you really mean by personality so I'm gonna give you an example now when I talk about personality and I kind of mentioned a little bit but it's like how much does the player want it right and one of my favorite phrases that I tell everybody that really shows if somebody wants to, to be a top player is really two things. The first one is winners want the ball when the game is on the line. So whether the game is 0-0, 1-0, 2-0, 2-3, you know, whatever the score is, even if it's 6-0, right, the game's done. A person that is a winner that wants to be successful wants the ball when the game's on the line. So it could be a final. It could be a semi-final, it could be a normal league game. It doesn't even matter what the game is. A winner wants the ball when the game is on the line. So no matter the circumstance, they're always trying to find the ball. And so for me, in a tryout process, I don't care what position you are. I want to hear you demanding the ball. So are you, do you have the guts to get the ball when you have two players on your back? Do you have the guts to always find the ball no matter the situation you always want the ball because if you have the ball you can make something happen now of course you can move off the ball to get it but you have to be you have to be demanding the soccer ball to make it work give it this way right you're you're doing a trial odp whatever college pro a coach obviously is going to look for especially at that level at college or pro they should be looking more on the technical base and the soccer iq base but they're going to want to see do you want the ball I mean, you can have technique and you can have the IQ. You can know where to be on the field. You could know, you could be that good with the ball. But if you hide, if you hide or you shy away, you're never going to be scouted because you might have the best ability in the world. You might have the best understanding or both. But if you're hiding in a game and you barely get the ball, how are you going to show that skill set? Yeah, you can stand in a good position and you know be ready for the pass. But if you're not demanding the ball or always looking to get the ball, how are you going to showcase your skill and qualities? So that's something to really consider is if you're a player and you want to go to the next level, whatever that is, you have to show your qualities. Now, any coach in the world, I think, will agree with this, or any scout, too, will agree with this. You have to show that personality to stand out. I always like giving examples of professionals that do this really well, and I'll give you three. The first one for me, and he's the best at it. I think he's unbelievable. Kevin De Bruyne of Man City. I mean, that guy is always trying to find the ball, and by doing that, he's able to make things happen because he has the technical quality and he has the ability, the, the soccer IQ, the awareness, the understanding of where to be on the field, where his teammates should be on the field to make, for example, incredible passes, uh, precision passes, whether that's playing quick combinations to get the ball back, whatever it is. But he's the guy that's always trying to find the ball. He's, he's the guy that makes Man City click when they have all their key pieces in. So... That's that, that midfield person. The second one I would give you is Andrea Pirlo. Uh, obviously, not really playing anymore, but I, the game would go through this guy, and you would just see tick, tock, tick, tock, and, it, and everything, would, they would try and funnel the ball through him. And once that happens, the game changes because he's able to influence the game because he's always trying to get 
the to get the soccer ball and, and to make you know the game happen and the third one I'll give you and I like him a lot is uh, Marco Verratti from PSG and again another guy that is an a central midfielder and if you don't watch the French League but you like PSG go watch this guy and obviously you got Cavani Neymar all those guys but watch this guy's ability he's and one of the things he actually he actually there's a video you can find it online in seven seconds he checked his shoulder he's looking around he's scanning the field like this he's going like this ten times in seven seconds so think about that he's constantly taking in information and looking for information that's a high soccer IQ he has very good technical ability and then he ties it off with personality because he's always trying to find the ball and when you have a player that has the first two technique and IQ awareness things like that if you can get the third thing you can skyrocket and I don't care how big you are how small you are how fast you are how strong you are it those those are should be bene, beneficial tr uh, attributes if you have them otherwise if you have those three key elements you can play at any level at the highest level really like they are so again just to quickly recap this technique tactical and game iq third thing personality and again if you have the first two all you need is that that drive that inner fire to be the go-to player stand out every time every single time and that's what I look for and once you have that key quality you know with that that inner fire the sky's the limit because just but remember though with the first two you have to have technique you have to have technique and you have to have soccer IQ and I say that because you could have all the fire inside of you you want if you don't have those two key qualities ahead of time you're not playing right you have to have those because you can't control a ball. If you don't know where to be on the field, you will get shut down every single time. Every time you get shut down, I promise. So, while personality is extremely important, you need it to reach the highest level, you also need the first two to reach the highest level, so it's, it all intertwines. Now, I'm going to tell you, on average, this isn't everyone, not every American coach, but the average American coach looks for these three things. First thing, physical ability, right? So again, how big, how fast, how strong, right? Because they need people that can win right away. They need players that can win right now. And so when you have those physical abilities first and you rely on them first, then, then you can be successful now. Now, in younger ages especially, because while players are developing and maturing, they don't have, for example, the same level of game understanding to figure out how to beat a bigger, faster, stronger player. So that physical ability can be relied on now. When you get to the older ages, especially usually at the highest levels, now there are some exceptions. 95% of players won't make it based on just physical attributes. Now, you get some guys that can burst through score goals like Lukaku, for example, and he made it, but his technical level is low. But I would say his soccer IQ is a little bit higher, so he's able to make something like that happen. But, it again, you can only rely on that so long. The, the second thing is most coaches look for how far can a player and I'll use this instead of pass it, kick it. How far can a player kick it? How strong can they kick it? And I use that because it's there's usually not so much of a purpose besides just clearing the ball, right? Can they clear the ball out? Can they hit a long pass? Can they shoot from 40 yards? Kicking. The third thing they'll look for, again, personality. I think, like we all said, coaches can agree on that one, or that I said coaches can agree on that one. But again, remember the first two, physical, and how far can they kick it? Now, remember, we're not playing kickball. We're not playing American football. You're not a punter. You're not a kicker. You're, you're a soccer player. So soccer playing abilities need to come first for us to change that. Now, again, this isn't every American coach. It's the majority, though. Understand that. So I want to know what you think when you've gone to a tryout. Whether whatever level that is, whether it's ODP at U12 or a DA tryout or an ID2 tryout or a college tryout or a pro tryout, what do you think the coach look for in you? What do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Let's discuss this. I I love talking about the game and things to you know kind of change the culture that we live in to help develop education. And I think with you giving me some feedback. We can open this discussion. We can have a conversation about it. So talk to me. What do you think a coach look for?